हेलो एंड असल ब्यूटीफुल पीपल हैव आर यू टाई आज की वीडियो में हम लोग ये बात करेंगे आपके साथ मैं अपना लाइफ एक्सपीरियंस शेयर करूँगा कि हाउ आई मूव टू यू खाई किस वीज़ा पे मैं यहाँ पे आया था हाउ डिड आई अप्रोच यूनिवर्सिटीज़ जब मेरी डिग्री कम्प्लीट हुई हाउ डिड आई स्विच ओवर टू अनदर वीज़ा मौसम आज बहुत ज़बरदस्त है सो इट्स अ नाइस वॉक आउट हेयर इन द पार्क इफ यू हैव नॉट सब्सक्राइब दिस चैनल ऑलरेडी द लाइक बटन सब्सक्राइब दिस चैनल and let's get into it so let's get started it's been a long journey it's been 12 years i have been in the uk i'm a british national now so basically uh many years back um i applied for multiple universities uh not a lot i think two or three universities within london uh one of the universities where i went to i uh, did my masters degree in computer systems and networking was in uh, university of greenwich uh that was back in 2010 but the reason i applied for this particular university and few others was that it's uh, quite reasonable um uh, i compared a lot of universities throughout the uk uh well not exactly in north region uh you could find uh, cheaper universities over there where you will have aap jahan pe aapki annual fees kafi kam hogi but i want to be somewhere where you can study but at the same time let's say if i want to do part time job i shouldn't have any difficulty finding a job there as well so just to you know manage your day to day living expenses as well so that was another thing in my mind so uh I contacted the Price the University um uh, through it was through email communication most of the time really uh, but you could contact them over the phone as well but I think email communication is much cheaper and much quicker as well they normally used to respond pretty quickly so uh I approached them with the certain programs that I was interested in um I gave them my uh, degree transcripts and stuff uh because i did my bachelor's in computer engineering back home that was a four year program uh when i was applying for my um you know master's degree over here in uh, greenwich um obviously at that time i did not had my bachelor's degree from back home uh as i belong from pakistan so i did my engineering degree from there uh what i did was i used my transcripts um to basically send off to the university here in london and uh with some supporting letter that obviously uh the education that i had was taught in english that was another requirement but obviously you have to give alts uh alts test as well uh or any other english equivalent test what they require uh you can give that as well um so i gave that and uh on the basis of that i think within a few weeks uh i got a response that yeah i've been given admission so initially uh they gave me uh the start date of joining the university in the september session which was september 2009 uh but due to some personal reasons and other things i was settling few things in pakistan so i could not join that session but the universities are pretty much cooperative in that sense that uh let's say you want to delay that uh admission to the next term so i requested that if for if if there if there is a possibility they can delay it till january session because normally the sessions over here are two in a year uh normally you enroll in uh, january or february session most of the university start in january or february uh but uh some universities uh, and their other session date is in september so it really depends when do you want to come in uh jahan tak baat hai kaun sa session uh, better rehta hai usme i think january is a good option uh january term uh, the reason i'm saying that is uh, जब आप वो टर्म आपकी कंप्लीट होती है देन यू हैव एट लीस्ट लाइक थ्री मंथ्स ऑफ गैप सो आपके पास थ्री मंथ्स तकरीबन आ जाते हैं वैन यूर ऑफ फ्राम यूनिवर्सिटी इज़ कम्प्लीटली क्लोज सो यू वुड नॉट बी डूइंग मच सो जब आपकी टर्म टाइम ना चल रहा हो यू अलाउड एज अ स्टूडेंट टू वर्क फुल टाइम सो नॉर्मली आप पे रिस्ट्रिक्शन होती हैं कि यू कैन ओनली वर्क ट्वेंटी आवर्स अ वीक वेर एज जब आप Uh, term time university is awful then you can work unlimited hours so you can do overtime let's say if you have joined some place so uh, yeah that's a good way of saving some money let's say you want to contribute towards your university remaining fee or something like that uh fee ki jahan tak baat ki jaye so uh, coming towards that 
मैंने जब यूनिवर्सिटी को अप्रोच किया सो दे गेव मी अ कंडीशनल ऑफर कंडीशनल ऑफर लेटर सो उसमें आई हैड टू पे लाइक आई थिंक इट वाज वन थर्ड ऑफ द फी और वन फोर्थ ऑफ द फी समथिंग लाइक दैट एट दैट टाइम मैनी इज बैक इन टू थाउजेंड टेन इट वॉज अराउंड टेन थाउजेंड प्लस या उससे थोड़ा सा ज़्यादा होगा दस ग्यारह हज़ार फीस थी um so i paid like 3000 pound to them and they gave me a conditional offer letter so uh, on the basis of that i can uh, i applied for my visa to come here so uh, the remaining fee jo rehti thi wo i i came over here i negotiated with them that can i pay that remaining amount in the remainder year in terms of installments uh they are pretty fine with that the universities over here are pretty fine with that they give you the option of paying in installments as well so let's say if you don't meet the installment date uh you can still request them for certain reason i couldn't meet it can you extend it for another month or two so let's say you're struggling for some reason then they normally do that as well because i've done that on multiple times so uh i completed my degree in like one year i had one year time um then i had another three months on top of that to complete my project work as well uh, as it did entail uh, project work to be done after that too uh i might have to find out what's going on right now because what i've uh, heard in the last few years that if you're here for one year degree you have to complete your degree within that one year so there is no up up uh, they won't give you any additional time to complete your project you have to complete it within that time so i'm not sure whether you have to start that in your last term then if that is the case so uh that could be another thing that needs to be checked on uh baat ki jaye once you're uh you're studying uh, there are plenty of opportunities over here where you can uh uh do part time job so it's it's a good idea if you let's say you're not financially strong and uh you need to, it's uh, rather than bring everything from back home all of the sum of money it's uh, best to you for your living expenses just just do a 20 hours per week job you can easily make at that time also the minimum wage per hour it was quite less i think it was 6 pounds and few pence per hour but now these days the minimum wage per hour is i think it's around 9 pounds something like that but for a student i think that is more than enough so uh, you can easily pay off your rent and other things baat ki jaye uh <clears throat> the expenses that you might have over here while you're studying um it really depends uh, on your lifestyle really when you're studying over here it's uh, baat ki jaye accommodation ki so what, what normally students do is in order to minimize their expenses normally the room for rent over here is about 500 to 700 pounds depending where you're living where you're studying whether you're living studying within london or outside london it really depends so uh that is another thing you need to consider where you when once you when you are applying so um uh, uh what i used to do was uh, when i was studying i used to share the room with uh, one and one or two other people so in that way uh, we used to split up the uh rent um so i was only paying like 150 pounds a month which was very 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 cheap so i was earning about 600 something i guess a month while i was in my term time and uh so paying 150 out of that um uh, which was inclusive of all the bills so i did not have to pay any any other bills uh so that that was uh, definitely a plus bonus um and uh yeah yeah you can uh, your food expenses wouldn't be that much maybe 100 a month or maybe even less really uh depends on if you're eating a lot from outside or yeah aap jo bhi hab aayenge so aapko cooking uh definitely you have to learn that um i i did not had a clue uh, how to cook uh, when i came over here because obviously um back home uh, everything was done by my mom or my sisters so once i was here uh, you have to learn everything from scratch um so uh, what we used to do is good idea is that uh, we were a lot of pakistani living in the house so what we did it was we uh, had made a group of seven so uh, in that way we used to cook one person every day so you get fresh meal every day and uh pretty much uh, it rotates seven day, seven days so we used to so for one person you only had to cook like once in a week so which was pretty easy and we could manage that easily because we were studying at the same time and managing our job as well 
नेक्स्ट स्टेप है बूम ऑन करते वन आई कम्प्लीटेड माई डिग्री I applied for PSW which was PS uh, post study work visa so uh wo normally aapko 2 saal ka diya jata tha so uh us us visa ki basically uh, requirement yahi hai ki aapne yahan ki degree ki hai and uh, you needed to show your degree or letter from your university if you haven't got your degree yet um that you have completed your term and all the credentials over here uh us uh, pretty much that is the main requirement um so you pretty much get straight away psw which is a two years visa so on that uh, visa you can easily apply for jobs so it's basically the idea behind that is ki aapne let's say professional uh, kisi company mein apply karna hai and get more work experience within the area that you studied it doesn't really matter ke usi area mein aapko जॉब ढूंढनी है यू जस्ट हैव दैट वीज उस पर आप पे है कि आप वट डू वॉन्ट डू विच एर यू वॉन्ट फाइंड द जॉब इन साइस अ टू ईयर गुड थिंग दे आर नो लिमिटेशन ऑफ वर्किंग टू नी आवर्स अ वीक सो यू कैन डू अनलिमिटेड अमाउंट ऑफ आवर्स सो दैट इज नॉट अ प्रॉब्लम वन आई वॉज स्टडिंग कम्प्लीट माई फर्स्ट टर्म देर वॉज अनदर वीजा कैटेगरी कॉल हैच एस एम पी विच वॉज हाईली स्किल वर्क वीजा माई इंटेंशन एंड माई प्लान वॉज टू वन साइ कम अवे हेयर आई कम्प्लीट माई स्टडी मूव ऑन टू पी एस डब्ल्यू एंड इवेंचुअली मूव ऑन टू एच एस एम पी दैन वन सी स्टे ऑन एच एस एम पी फॉर फाइव ईयर्स यू कैन अप्लाई फॉर इनडेफिनेट लीव टू रिमेन आई एल आर इन सिंपल वर्ड्स सो विच इज द इनडेफिनेट स्टे हेयर सो दे आर नो फर्दर लिमिटेशन ऑन यू एंड वॉन्स यूर ऑन आई एल आर फॉर वन ईयर यू कैन अप्लाई फॉर ब्रिटिश पासपोर्ट सो दैट वॉज द आइडिया बट अनफॉर्चुनेटली एज थिंग्स चेंज ओवर हेयर वे रैपिडली एवरी ईयर दे क्लोज डाउन एच एस एम पी सो एट दैट टाइम आई डिसाइडेड लेट्स लेट्स गेट द पी एस डब्ल्यू एंड देन आई वर्क आउट माई वाई वॉट टू डू आई ओवेंचली गॉ my psw um i tried my best my main aim was because the hsmp visa was closed that category let's try finding a work permit so what is a work permit is basically you're looking for a job and the company sponsors you that they will hire you and or you're working for them and they get you the working visa which i can't remember exactly few of my friends moved on to that so they you have to stay on that for 5 years and then you can apply for indefinite as well my intentions was to look after uh, look for that particular visa but unfortunately uh, you can say uh, it, it depends on one's luck as well i was not able to find it uh, within that particular time alhamdulillah with my hard work uh, things did pay off so after my psw before it was about to expire uh, i moved on to another visa category which is called entrepreneur visa Uh, which is kind of like a business visa uh quite a lot of people moved on to that visa around i think 2013 14 15 period um so uh at that time the requirement was pretty simple for that particular visa you had to show that you have 50000 uh in your in your bank or something like that that you are able to invest within your business uh in the upcoming years um and uh, the other good thing about that was that it's not just yourself you can add another partner so let's say you have another partner or friend who joins you so um one can show 10000 other can show 40000 or split it 25 25 so it didn't really depend how much you have to show individually so um luckily uh, i found someone who already had about 40000 pound or 38000 pound the remaining i just added on top of that and we basically uh, moved on to that particular visa category we as i moved a uh, opened a limited company uh, started business in that particular area so uh, that was one thing but uh, uh, i think i got the visa for about 2 to 2 and a half years um and now obviously uh, after that i had to extend it same as hsmp by hsmp was closed so we had to extend this particular entrepreneurial visa as well um in order to complete the five year term and then apply for indefinite leave to remain uh but what i uh, found out at that particular time uh, near the extension was there were quite a lot of uh, refusals people were having uh, there were multiple reasons i would suggest that if if you're here and you need information 
there are loads of Facebook groups with plenty of experienced people they share their experiences knowledge and stuff uh, there are so many ups and downs so people come across so they share their experiences uh, it's best to join those groups if you have any particular query ask them um, because it, it really helps so I, I utilize quite a lot of these groups uh, for my visa extensions or new visa category that I might have been applying for in the past so what I did was I just because of the refusal for a lot of people in entrepreneurial category I decided not to go for an extension rather um, I got married uh, in uh, not here but back home um, I had loads of options over here but eventually decided not to marry here uh, so uh, yeah uh, I I got married back home uh, what I did was uh, um, I got all the paperwork sorted over here before I brought my wife so the uh, wedding and everything that was done later on so uh, I uh, went for my nikah ceremony back home um, I got that done, um, brought the paperwork for her, uh, all the documents that I needed to apply for her spouse visa. I, uh, I basically uh, brought them here, applied for her visa. Uh, she moved on to dependent of mine um, as at that time. At that time I was still on entrepreneurial visa, um, the, the, which is a business category. So I moved her on to my spouse. Um, so or once I had the visa all confirmed, went back for my marriage, uh, got the Mendi, Barad, Rukhsati, all locations done and uh, she came back with me, uh, she came over here to UK with me. Um, so uh, yeah, it was a nice uh, start of a new life uh, with your uh, better half partner. Uh, so yeah, it was a good time over here with uh, obviously things change once you're married and everything. Um, she came over here on as a dependent of mine. Uh, there is a just a, there was just a requirement of showing that you earn enough money of the per annum. Um, I think it was about 24, 25 thousand pounds, something like that, um, or maybe it was less. I can't remember exactly. Um, but Alhamdulillah, I was earning much, much more than that. So on the basis of that, I got the visa for her. My wife decided later on to uh, do a PhD degree from here. Um, she already did MPhil from back home. Because I saw so many people entrepreneur extensions being re refused, it's always best to safe play and see what are the best options for you. So uh, because uh, my wife wanted to do PhD from a university over here in uh, UK, I decided, uh, you know what, you can carry on. I'll support you financially for that. And um, I, once she gets the student visa, I can move on to the dependent visa because PhD normally asks for about four to five years that will complete my 10 year route over here because there is another route. If you stay over here uh, uh, for 10 years legally, uh, no matter what visa category you're on, uh, you get you are eligible to apply for indefinite leave to remain. So that's another important thing you need to know. We applied for quite a few universities and um, obviously uh, managing your family, rental and everything over here. And then if you have to pay for PhD degree, which is uh, let's say, <clears throat> the uh, London University course on average was about £18,000 uh, uh, then uh, you have to let's say multi multiply that for four years so it's about £55,000-£60,000 you have to invest for that particular degree so you need to know you need to work out in advance how are you going to save that uh, do you have the do you already have saving for it or you uh, if you would be working regularly to pay them off while you're working uh, what kind of job will you be doing because norm normally what I found over here was no matter how professional job you do I I have been working as an IT or network engineer myself so which was paid pretty good but no matter how high the salary would be it's still a, a bit of struggle as how you can save 18,000 pound a year separately just for the studies itself because you got your rent to pay off your utility bills other things so just keep that in mind experience because we applied for multiple universities uh, we uh, one of the university we applied for was based in Glasgow uh, the university name was University of Stratlide and then we applied for a few universities in London as well so uh, the intention was that 
because it would be a uh, research work uh, technically the student did not have to um, attend the classes which is one of the requirements if let's say you're doing a master's degree because you need have to attend a number of uh, hours within the university per week because they do record your attendance so but for phd that was slightly different so what we did was uh, my wife negotiated with her supervisor uh, uh, for phd that obviously let's say if if we are living in london uh, which was our preferable place uh, our preference because there are more job opportunities and stuff over here so i could earn good money over here by doing contractual work because there are multiple kind of jobs uh, permanent jobs which you might have limited uh, salary but obviously you get other benefits like uh, uh, holidays uh, bonus schemes and other things and they give you permanent employees other other benefits as well like healthcare uh, but the uh, other type of job you can do is let's say contract work it could be for three months six months could extend could not extend it depend on it could be a project work so uh, I decided to go for contract work because in that way I can earn much much more money maybe three times money than what I can earn in a permanent job in that way I can pay off the fee and stuff which was much easier for me but the only hassle with that is as I mentioned because this contract it could be three months six months could extend after six months could not so if it finishes then you have to look for another job so another contract um, so uh, that was but alhamdulillah with my case uh, whenever my uh, contract used to end I was able to find another one and it just kept on going really so alhamdulillah I paid 55 to 60 thousand pound for her uh, for her university fee uh, during those four years so she completed her degree within four years of time uh, within the time scale actually um, so uh, <coughs> I moved on to her dependent visa in that way which extended my visa for about four and a half years because they normally give you a few months uh, more more visa time uh, than the normal term time so uh, in that way I completed my 10 years in the UK so as I mentioned earlier there is a category which is uh, long-term residency in the UK if you if you have been living in the UK for 10 years uh, no matter what visa category uh, you are eligible to apply for indefinite leave to remain one thing which I forgot to mention was because we applied for multiple universities a couple of universities in London and there was one university in Glasgow which was University of Scratline um, we thought that maybe if she get admission in one of the universities in the north uh, it was much cheaper university because what we compared was that the university let's say in London was we had to pay £18,000 a year so if the PhD lasts for four years it could be about £60,000 uh, near about £60,000 uh, that you have to pay for four years whereas uh, we found a university University of Scraglide that she had to only pay £10,000 per year so maybe we were saving about £20,000 overall uh, or maybe a bit more um, so uh, the intention was that because it's a PhD degree, she did not have to. Um, um, she did not have to attend classes on a regular basis in university. But, uh, if you're doing a master's degree over here, you have to attend on a regular basis. So uh, your attendance is being monitored as an international student. But if you're if you're uh, doing a PhD degree, uh, because it's uh, uh, if it's a research work, you do not have to attend regular classes. So uh, she's spoken to her supervisor, that uh, which was uh, in a university uh, in Glasgow, that if we are living in London, can we just do the meetings, which would be monthly, two three meetings a month. Um, we can do that, or maybe if it's more, then uh, we can do that over. Uh, uh, Skype or Teams or other platforms because everything is online now so uh, they, they said yeah that's absolutely fine you can do that so the supervisor agreed to that and even if they we, we told them that let's say if we have to visit the university for some reason physically to meet you we can do that one or two times a month that's not a problem because the we look at the flights it was quite cheaper um, so from Gatwick Airport and uh, others uh, maybe 20 pounds 30 pounds that, that kind of thing to uh, going to Glasgow so we thought if you have to do it one two times a month that's not a problem we can do that because I was doing contractual work and I was earning good money in that so yeah I was I was able to manage that and the supervisor agreed to that now guess what what happened we uh, got the offer 
uh, conditional offer from the University of Scratch Line. Um, uh, the condition was in order for you to uh, switch over your visa category, you have to go back home and apply from there. So uh, my wife went back home to Pakistan, applied for her student visa uh, from there, uh, got the cash letter and there was other there was a different letter she had at that time. I, I can't remember at that time, but because her research was in uh, around the area of physics and uh, mathematics, those kind of things, uh, fluid dynamics, um, she had to get some kind of approval because those kind of things are used in um, uh, other chemicals, things which where they were concerned. Um, so if you're doing such kind of degree, you have to get an approval letter from some uh, authorized body as well. I can't remember the name at the moment. So we had to wait for that because it took about three weeks to get a letter from there once we applied. So once we had that, my wife went back home, applied for student visa. Uh, she got the visa within a few weeks, uh, which was good. So she came back. We went to uh, Glasgow to uh, apply for, um, to basically register ourselves that she's here. Uh, to study and guess what happened uh, we had a very bad experience because the admission officer over here uh, uh, once we reached there said that your permanent address which you're showing as per our driving license uh, which is one form of ID that you use, you use over here was in London and they said because you're a full-time student you have to live in Glasgow so uh, they said no you have to move over here you have to be here in order if you're a full-time student you can't live in london we said well this has already been agreed by the supervisor that uh, we do not need to do that because it's because it's a phd research degree uh, if uh, any communication can be done online and if you have to uh, let's say meet up physically then uh, we can uh, we can always fly over here one or two times a month so that's all been agreed by the supervisor uh, but eventually uh, uh, or say unfortunately the admission office did not agree to that and they said no we can't register you um, so just just imagine the pain that we had uh, the whole process that we've gone through so the supervisor we agreed to them that that is a possibility they were all fine with that uh, because there is no attendance as such you do not need to come to the university uh, we went back home with the flight cost and everything with the visa cost and stuff uh, and we also paid two three thousand pounds to them upfront university as well to get the cash letter to apply for the visa uh, all this went really down the drain because um, especially the stress that you go through so uh, we decided now that, that, that's what we're going to work out because uh, we had no intentions to move to glasgow uh, there were a couple of reasons that uh, because i I was the main person thinking to obviously finance her and for me in order to finance her um, I had to do some kind of professional job but when you look at the job market within Glasgow or Scotland side it's uh, you got very uh, limited options uh, there are way less jobs that you see every now and then on the market and if there are then it would be a lot of competition because loads of people would be applying for it so that was another concern of mine so we, we thought no we, we would be living nearby London uh, where you have multiple options more options than uh, Glasgow but eventually when they uh, did that uh, we were thinking <laughs> what to do really because that was not part of plan and it's not something which the supervisor or what we agreed with the university earlier so but get uh, there was a uh the other door opens for you uh, and it, it's for you better so what happened was because we applied for multiple universities um, we as soon as we that happened on that day very next day we got a letter from another university in london that the uh, admission has uh, they are offering us the admission uh, offering her the admission so uh, she was able to secure a place there so but what we decided was okay uh, i was a bit running out of uh, visa time we had limited time uh, to apply for it because i wanted her to move to student visa and once she's here then i can apply to move on to as a dependent for her so in that way i can secure a four and a half years of visa that way so alhamdulillah we uh, managed to secure uh, 
an offer, a conditional offer from a university in London at that time. So uh, my wife had to go fly once again, I think after a week, within a week time, uh, because she just came a week before from Pakistan to join the university in Glasgow. However, because that did not happen, so to apply for a new visa or if you're switching university, you had to leave the country, go back to your country and apply for the admission again. So we got the cast letter, uh, the other things, as well, um, applied for the new student visa to be switched to the other university. Uh, and uh, yeah, Alhamdulillah, she managed to get that, uh, completed her degree, um, and I uh, moved on to a dependent visa. So in that way, I was, if you're on a dependent visa, there are no limitation of the amount of hours that you can work. You can work unlimited hours. So it was that way pretty much easy for me to do any kind of job, uh, whether that is permanent contract, um, uh, fixed term contract, those kind of things. Um, so there was no limitation on that. So I was able to afford that fee. So once I was here, I completed my 10 years within that particular time and I applied for my indefinite leave to remain. Uh, once you're on indefinite leave to remain, unless your partner is British national, uh, you have to wait for one year on indefinite leave to remain and you can apply for British nationality. So that is it. The time approached and uh, I uh, managed to get my uh, British passport. Um, and uh, the journey came to an end here really and uh, yeah it's been a tough journey uh, loads of investment because obviously I can take as what I've spent over the university as my investment as well but it's good that my wife did the degree now Alhamdulillah we have uh, two children um, so she has not uh, joined any uh, she's not working at the moment but uh, eventually she might do in the future but obviously someone has to look after kids it's not like back home where you have your da 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 di john uh, na 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 john and stuff and people can look after your kids and uh, in the meantime you can work and get experience related to the field that you have studied in um so i hope this video you you might have liked this video if you did uh, like subscribe and share this video and uh, yeah uh, don't forget to comment comment as well thank you Really nice weather over here. Quite a lot of families in the park.